see my new coworker here. Hi, Mike. <laughs> Congratulations, that's true. Is this like the first public outing outside of Twitter? Yeah. Mike's like, huh? Wait, 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 what happened? <laughs> <laughs> my, my company got acquired by IBM. Oh, okay. <laughs> Mike's like, oh, another one. <laughs> I was just thinking. I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to buy IBM. We're... <laughs> Steve, what are you guys doing? <laughs> I don't know. Is it a type machine, typewriter machine company going to buy you guys? Or <laughs> Dude, we we gave up typewriters a long time ago. <laughs> Do they still produce computers? Actually, now that I think about it, because there was the um, okay, but not laptops. I'm trying to think of the is it Lenovo brand that was uh, yeah yeah we we sold we sold ThinkPad to Lenovo. Yeah. Oh, sorry, ThinkPads. They were and, so and they, they were nice, huh? They they were nice. They're just super durable. Well, I guess you're right. They still are nice, but I I I, I miss the old ThinkPads. They were they were cool. Or the or double double, uh, nubs. Who was that? That was, that was me. We've got, we sold the x86 server business to Lenovo as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was the second second sale. <laughs> and, 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 and of course, as soon as we get rid of everything, now, now chips are the thing, right? Time to start building fabs again. <laughs> It'll be nice to start traveling and needing laptops again. Oh man, yep, that will be nice. I don't know. Are they? Are we going to have to wear masks at KubeCon? What is California's policy as a state? I don't know. L A. Yeah, L A. Yeah, I imagine they'll. Yeah, they'll probably require it. I don't know. That'd be a good question. I mean, here in Seattle, it's like. It's an individual company's uh, choice, and there's few and fewer, fewer and fewer requiring. The Linux Foundation is going to require vaccinations, but it is I don't know beyond that if they are going to require masks or not yet. Does everybody have their new boarding pass? Yours is purple. It's well, so they actually uh, UW Medicine started giving out little sleeves for mm. um, the cards. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So. Brennan, Brennan, who were you with? Box boat or? Yep, I'm a box boater. Cool. Yeah, thanks um, for having us. I guess we're at the five minute mark and the first one was a good discussion that so uh, Jason, I guess the floor is yours on finding a time that makes it work for everybody. Uh, yeah, I mean, working for everybody is an unattainable goal, uh, but working for more or most uh, might be achievable. Uh, this is just a plug to fill out the doodle. I think there's like six or seven people who have so far. If we get a few more and there's sort of a, an, an overwhelming or even moderately overwhelming uh, better alternative, uh, I will propose them, I guess, here or somewhere uh, and see if we could find a better time. Um, yeah, it's not binding. Uh, let me know if a time works for you and we'll see if there are times that work for other people. Yeah, that's it. That's my plug. Just on the notes, it's come up quite a few times on this, and it's, it's a, it is struggling to find different time zones. And I, I put a little suggestion there is, is the morning US time, to be fair, um, a balance across the various, okay, now I'm really distracted by Vanessa's very creative background now. She's upped it to a whole Sorry. new level. No, it's great. It used to be much worse, but. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's just awesome. Um, is it is is morning like a, a way that maybe people agree that we just got to figure out which day, which day? Like Monday through Monday through Thursday, so we're not in Friday night for some people. Is that a yeah? Well, yeah. The problem is that every everybody knows that, right? <laughs> it, yeah, not nine a.m. Eastern or eight a.m. Eastern is the you know the universal time for everybody. 
but there's only one hour window and everybody uses it. So we, we, we end yeah. up getting a lot of people, you know, in and out. We, we've tried before. Um, it, it's, yeah. It's hard. One, one uh, alternative that I have had uh, experienced some moderate success with is having uh, every other week sometime, every other week, 7 a.m. Eastern time, and then every other week, you know, 4 p.m. Eastern time or, or you know, whatever to, to meet. I mean, again, going back to sure. there's absolutely no time that will work for everybody. There's going, there's 24 right. time zones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we've done that, especially when, you know, Asia Pacific is doing a lot of, a, you know, one of the major features. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll do that time shift. Uh, but it's just hard to maintain yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think, I mean, the... Uh, the goal is also so that there is a diversity of people coming to the meetings, a diversity of people being able to lead the meetings, a diversity, you know, if, if one time doesn't work for you, like that should be fine. There should be another meeting you can catch the next time or the recording or whatever. So um, just a plug for fill out, we'll get more data, we'll figure out what works or if nothing works and this is the optimal time, we have learned something in that also. So. Uh, yeah. So when you do the alternating weeks uh, for different times of meetings, does that mean that like each time zone that goes to some, you know, one particular meeting catches up by like watching the video of the last one? Like, how do you how do you make sure that everyone's synced uh, when it's likely the case that most people are going to like one time zone meeting? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, this one actually hard. does get recorded. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it, uh, notes and recordings uh, are basically required at that point um but so is the design that you sort of like have the same discussions twice or is it that like you can try to continue moving on the same it, forward on the same discussions i don't think the goal of the alternating meetings is for anybody to feel like they have to go to all the meetings uh in the in the Tecton community where we're doing this, there's a Monday at 6 p.m. meeting for people in Australia mainly, and the people in Australia mainly work on some like one area of stuff. And so that meeting is mainly about the stuff they want to talk about and anybody, you know, in compatible time zones that are interested in it. Um, it sometimes works, it sometimes doesn't work. I don't know that I'm necessarily advocating for uh, alternating meetings, but I am advocating for getting more data about what times people could do it so that we can use that to figure out if there's a good time. Um, it's it's difficult also to bring up when meetings work for people in this group, because this is naturally a survivorship bias problem of like, well, this time works for everyone who's here. So, uh, uh, yeah. so go spread the word also and see, you know, if anybody is interested who can't make this meeting, well, that's the point we should, uh, we should get right. their feedback as well. And and, and and I guess that's my sort of feedback here is most of the people on the original calls were California based, you know, for, for obvious reasons, <laughs> right? A, a lot of this stuff was donated from Docker and, and, it, and it sort of happened that way. And, and, and that's why it was afternoon, not morning, which is the time that California is usually not gonna be around. So that, while that, that window works for some people, yeah, we, it was hard to get California to get up early enough. Yeah. Oh, Steve has his hand up or has something in his background. <laughs> that, that would be nice with a floating hand. I, do, and Sean or Jason, sorry. Do, do you remember if Doodle has a way to ask additional questions? Like, because we tried the... We tried doing the alternating before and it has been struggling and, and because no answer is perfect. Would would it be better to do weekly alternating or a three month stint in one and a three month stint the next? And, and I actually don't really have an opinion one way or the other. Um, I just, I remember the reluctance to doing the alternating. Yeah, I, uh, I think that the three month alternating thing is a recipe for shaking people off of your community, right? Like if every three months the meetings become impossible to go to, I'm not gonna come back in the fourth month. I'm just gonna stop contributing, right? Uh, so it's I mean, better to do alternating I, yeah. I, either every other week and I just put it on my calendars every other week and just survive as that. Yeah. Uh, again, we will get better data about what we're actually advocating for when people fill out the thing. And then we might find that there are two really good times that are like opposite times. And then that will be a good indication that the alternating time is a good idea. But 
we won't know until we collect your precious, precious data. So the call to action is put that doodle poll everywhere you can find people. Yeah, tweet it out, sky rate it, <laughs> do whatever you can. It's a bit long to sky rate. It's going to be costly, but it's worth it. Sounds good. Cool. Uh, Brandon? Yeah, so this is continuing last week um, where the question has come in. I'll go ahead and throw a quick screen share on this. Question has come in when we look at what an in, what an image index is supposed to contain. And the challenge comes in that when we have the manifest array, it says it's required property contains a list of manifests. So that creates an assumption that these are going to be manifest. But then the contents of that is really just a list of descriptors. So then potentially we're looking at descriptors. And we've got the requirements that the media type must on the, you know must support that it can have a image manifest, but it could also include other stuff. So it could have different media types. And yeah, the that, challenge... that language is pretty consistent throughout the, the various property types that, you know, in, inherit from descriptor or, or done, you know, mostly I think the index was about the platforms, not, not about the fact that it, it inherits from descriptor, right? Yeah. And so the challenge comes up when we get over to uh, distribution, distribution add an issue on this, where the um, Docker themselves, as part of BuildKit, BuildX, has gone through and made their own version that puts in, let me see if I can find the example here, and otherwise I've got one local that I was working on frantically, um, where they make their index. And sorry, this is, well, that's an index, but they've got a media type with some different manifest in there that are not necessarily a manifest or it's point actually as blobs under the covers. You can see so. it says layer. If you scroll up, there was actually the first uh, manifest entry section says layer versus manifest. Yeah. And so they'll put some different media types in there. I was frantically just trying on my local environment to put one of these things. And yeah, it does say layer and it's just a whole bunch of layers and then one media type with a cache config in there. So. It's That's putting stuff, yeah, yeah. It's putting stuff inside of an index that is not necessarily a manifest, and so that's kind of the challenge distribution distribution had. And so, it got brought up over here last week. Of okay, do we need to redefine some of this stuff? Do we need to define what is a manifest? Because we didn't really define that specifically in here. So, actually, the the description this requires property contains a list of manifests and manifests is a link for something else. And that's where the definition of a manifest is. So if you click there, you go directly to the definition of yeah. a manifest and then you have the required properties for that. So uh, yeah, this is this was a bit controversial, uh, but, but to me, as soon as I read the, the spec, um, an index is just a set of manifests and a manifest is certainly not a tarball or uh, something else. It needs to be a JSON payload with the minimum required properties that uh, this document describes. Uh, and I think that's where the, the problem lies. And this is not actually about OCI because before OCI BuildKit was using um, manifest lists from Docker. And the Docker stack is even more strict because there can only be two media types within the manifest array on a list. Uh, and it's either a manifest schema two or a schema one. And the uh, build kit was already using that to include uh, layers and a config. Um, so yeah, I think for me, the spec is clear in that regard. Uh, I do see this example. Uh, it's the first time that I'm seeing it. Uh, but where does that come from? Is this is in the, the image layout ID? file. So they give an example as part of their stuff. So when they were looking at what does an index example look like, a lot of us have taken the assumption that a manifest is usually JSON, but it could be other stuff. And so this was some of the stuff that we were looking at last week, Vincent was pointing out, was that there are situations that they were putting out there where there could be something other than a JSON that's, that is a manifest. My interpretation of that was that I mean, a manifest is still a manifest that describes the thing, you know, an artifact in the registry. 
whether it's JSON or XML um, was, I, you know, I don't, I don't know who put that in there. It's, it's the, I think the idea is that there can be different manifest types and that's kind of where we ran from this in the past, uh, you know, ran with it with other ideas, but it's, there is a difference between a manifest that describes things that registries process on ingress versus the blobs that contain the content that represents what a manifest is yeah. uh, surfacing. Well, a lot of us have taken the assumption that, you know, if this is JSON, I think what I saw from some of the distribution discussion was that they were expecting that they could always parse the JSON no matter what, and always get a config object and a layers object and just work with that as a manifest, no matter what the manifest version was. I don't think that is a proper, uh, proper way to look at that because there could always be a future manifest format that changes these. And there's no guarantee that it's always gonna have those two fields. Yeah, that is true. We, we have that transition from Docker to OCI. And whenever the transition to something else happens, we will have to adapt. Uh, but until then, uh, I think it should work out with what we have and, and try to yeah. establish the norms around that uh, because registry needs some kind of predictability, right? Uh, and users also need that because if you handle some random content with, which can be whatever, uh, you can't really provide a consistent experience. Uh, there is much more to this specific topic about toolkits, although I think we have a, a solution in hand for that specific case. I think the the key thing to ca catch in the image spec is the is the you know the uppercase language, right? And in this case, um, it clearly says that you know it must support the OCI image manifest type, and it and it's very you know it's very loose with saying you know it. Trust me, we would have said can only if that was what we wanted to say, right? And, and it goes on to say, you know, it you you can pretty much do whatever you want. Um, you just we need if you want it to be OCI compatible, it has to at least support the OCI types. Yeah, one of the That's other the phrases. One of the other phrases we had in here was that if it, if you encounter a media type that uh, you don't know what to do with, then the implementation must ignore it. Exactly. And one of the, so, one of the so questions don't, we don't you can't throw a you know an error exception here, right? Yeah, and and part of the question we had last week is well, what does it mean to ignore, and does that mean that it's now valid for garbage collection or not? Um, but also, we're looking at the question of between the client and the server because the client may want to ignore it, where the server may want to actually do something with it. Right, and then when you're talking about garbage collection, you're running over to the distribution specification, right? Yeah. So, so, so just well, to clarify, not even that, that XML media type is in there as an example of something to ignore, not to say like, you know, here's an XML media type and it's a manifest, go over to the manifest page. Oh, we will only have a definition for this in JSON. Exactly. Okay. I, I don't think that's the case. Um, uh, that was an example of, well, Maybe, right? I, but it but it is an example of something that like is a thing you might consider a manifest, right? This is for the some other packaging for desktop, right? Um, yeah, there, I there think was that's a group using it. Right say it. Yeah, right. But it, it does say in the spec that, that it should ignore, right? Yeah. But you yeah. you could write a registry implementation that understands how to parse that and do yes. your own counting of refs and things, right? I guess I'm wondering at what point would you want to actually have a manifest definition for XML? I, I, the interpretation was a little like, I, I, the example is perfect actually, but I think the idea is that a registry on ingestion would look at the media type and they're unique, right? The, the idea that's application slash XML obviously is a pretty generic one, but maybe it's application slash Vanessa dot XML. You know, in other words, there's a specific format that happens to be an XML versus JSON, but the registries choose what manifest types they know to process and they choose to process them or they don't. So the idea is that we could submit a new manifest type to the registries to support a, you know, a new set of scenarios and those registries either know how to process it or not. And Do we I, say I, what the response is given that there's a type that a registry doesn't know how to process? Well, that's what I think Brandon's point is interesting is I think sometimes the wording misses the detail, whether it's a server or a client. 
Like it totally makes sense that a client would just ignore something that it gets. It's like, oh, I'm asking for this thing. I'm asking for this name thing, right? Repo colon tag. And what I get back is a manifest that I don't know what is, you know, or the a foo client. And the foo client says, well, I don't know what that is. So I'm just going to ignore it. And maybe it should throw an error. But I, I think the point is, is that a client can ignore it because it doesn't know what to do with it. A server, I actually think should provide some more, actually, probably even a client, should provide some feedback that says, you just sent me something. I don't know how to process it. I don't know if ignore is the right answer, to be fair. In either yeah, case. Yeah, I, I agree with that. that is also people, people implementing this should probably know that if they talk to a server that doesn't implement it, that what does it look like on the server? You know, if, if the server is just going to ignore something unknown, then that's part of your development process of how you know this is going to be handled on the server. But there should be some base level functionality. The challenge is that garbage collection isn't defined even in distribution spec today. That's left up to the implementation, I believe. There's one more ambiguous point here for distribution. When you push an index, all the manifest needs to exist in the manifest file store. Do we assume that irrespective of it being XML or not, that does exist? Or do we ignore the fact that the descriptor might not even exist in the, um, in the implementation? So and is that an image spec definition or a distribution spec definition? I think John kind of hit a lot on this one earlier. I have a lot of opinions, but I'm trying to not just scream at the mic. Um, so I, I think you there are a lot of assumptions being stated that are often true, but not necessarily true. Uh, like the distribution spec does not require that all of the manifests that an index references actually be pushed to the manifest store. It also doesn't define what a manifest store is. Um, and and I think that, that... I think my point earlier, John, was that that would be where that would happen. Not that it was there already. Yeah, it's ambiguous at this point. That's It's ambiguous. Yeah, yeah. That it's not defined. I, I think there's a lot of ambiguity. And I, I tried to get this clarified in the distribution spec, but I think uh, we erred on the side of more generic than useful. Um, so I think this is only a problem if you have um, split your content store into two different namespaces, being like blobs and manifests, right? If they all target the same CAS, it doesn't matter if it's a blob or a manifest. You can check to see, does this thing exist? Um, so like, there's a whole class of registry implementations that aren't affected by this problem. I just want to point that out. Is it like, this isn't always a problem. Um, the second point I want to make is like, if you know all of the things that you accept as a registry you know, by their media type, you could derive that if this thing exists, uh, it must be a blob if I don't recognize it as a manifest media type. This is a potential implementation that I think a lot of people have done to support this cache manifest thing. Um, but I mean, so regardless, right, there, there's ambiguity here. And I think there are two directions we can go. Um, one is like what most people I think have assumed is that if the thing is in a manifests array in an index, that thing must have been uploaded to the manifest handler. Is that about right? Do most people agree that that is how they're interpreting this? I mean, it does say manifest collection. So yeah, I think that is a, a logical thing. And if you look at that issue that I pasted in there for Moby, which uh, Jab created, it's actually been what we found is the majority of them don't um, support it. Uh, the fact that ACR did was actually a side effect that I explained in one of these you know, things is that with tasks, we support build X, it came in as a support issue and engineering just went and fixed it with, had I even seen it, well, we would have tried to figure out how to fix the customer scenario we would have kind of pushed back and said, hey, can we fix this in a more generic way? Um, what I've seen the distribution spec maintainers talk about is there was a workaround put in place that kind of made this work, but it wasn't really even intended. You mean yeah, the distribution so maintainers? Yeah. So sorry, basically- Distribution, distributions, uh, sorry, yes. Registry. Not distribution spec. So basically the only way this is working today for cache images for the distribution registry and other registries based on that is because several years ago, it was introduced to the bug with the workarounds uh, and that caused uh, blobs to be linked or validations for uh, manifests to be um, converged with the validations for blobs. So if you have an index which references a blob, 
and the manifest, uh, the registry, the distribution registry will use the exact same code to verify if both of those references exist. Um, and, and, and that is wrong uh, in our view, because as you said, what we assume is that everything that is referenced inside the manifest array must have been uploaded through the manifest endpoint and uh, only uh, JSON payloads that perform with the manifest spec can be uploaded through that endpoint. The problem is that uh, these bugs sneak in and, and then people uh, were able to push these images to the registry because of that. Um, and that's what we are trying now to revert. Yeah, I, I mean, I think your interpretation is not unreasonable, but that's not what the spec says. So uh, if we want that interpretation to be the case, I think we should modify one of the specs to make it so. Uh, I would argue that this probably belongs in distribution spec, but um, that, that's, yeah, I'm not. There's, there's a long history here though. Like when this was, this was the recommendation actually back years ago when it was introduced because um, there was this period of time where these new types were coming out. We weren't quite sure how to represent them since everything that we had that existed was very image specific. So like this, this was actually recommended at the time and the, the support and distribution was intentional to, to get this working. Um, there, was even, there was even a last minute push or discussion to generalize the index before the uh, OCI image spec went 1.0 uh, to make the index more generic so that it wasn't just lists. Um, and it, it, it all kind of circles around. It's the same problem that, that Steve's been talking about for years about how do we define artifacts. And this, this was a recommendation at the time. That's why I still think that it's not bad to continue supporting it in the places that it's already supported. But yeah, I wouldn't necessarily recommend going and making it official in the spec. Um, my take, at least on the distribution distribution side, was that uh, the implementation was designed to be a superset and to support cases that were not necessarily explicitly defined by OCI, but also not explicitly denied or said stuff you couldn't do. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, this is why I added support for this thing to uh, artifact registry. Um, so, and, 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 you know, when I was implementing this stuff, I was reading the spec and it was not clear to me whether or not, uh, an index could be recursive and there's a bunch of issues in PRs. And I think the reason this stuff got added, you know, this should support the following and, you know, should other media types is I pushed on that issue. Like, can an index reference another index? Someone eventually said yes. And so here we are. So we, so in my mind, that kind of pushed us towards this, this is a generic, like, DAG structure, you can basically implement Lisp on top of an index, right? Um, I there was this ugly thing called repository types that were added in distribution specifically for a Docker feature to separate what was an image versus what was a plugin. So yeah, there, there, was, there was a few like bad attempts at like differentiating, differentiating types. And there was a uh, requirement put in at the time for Docker Hub to explicitly like separate namespaces so that you couldn't actually push different types of images or you couldn't push like plugins and images to the same repository and older versions of Docker that, that didn't handle the media type so well. So yeah, I think the history of it, it just wasn't very clean before and it, it ended up with some of this and like, that's that's where a lot of the ambiguity comes today. I mean, it's some of it's almost intentionally ambiguous because they're dancing around some of these like use cases that had been put in place that we knew weren't well. But I mean, they they exist, so we're trying not to break them. Yeah, I I think like what most people have done now is either fall back or use the media type to determine if it, a thing is a manifest or a blob. I think that's one reasonable approach to interpret an index. The other is assume everything is either a manifest because it's in the manifest field or it's a blob because it's in the layers slash config field. That's another reasonable interpretation. And I'm fine with both of them as long as we all agree and actually make the spec say that. Um, Steve has his hands up. I don't know if you've been waiting. Yeah, I just wanted to build, I mean, like your point about the manifest and the indexes and the index can reference another index and another index and there's this recursive thing. And I remember we, such a, I remember we were talking about this camera, we wound up doing to support it, but the, I think regardless, 
the, the difference does come back to this life cycle management problem, which I think all of us that have been running, the longer you run a registry, the longer this problem or the bigger this problem gets with the amount of content customers store in it and are trying to figure out how to manage that. And it's not just a quick tangent. It's not just the size of the content. It's as they're starting to scan that content and they're finding vulnerabilities, they want to get rid of this content because now they're getting alerts for stuff that they just don't even want to maintain. So to come back from the tangent, the, the idea that a manifest is a way to say, this is the thing I'm defining a life cycle around, um, makes, makes, is, is the defining boundary that at least I, we've been thinking about it that way in ACR is whether it's a, a manifest list, whether it's a manifest, an image manifest, an image index, or an artifact manifest, it's a way to define a thing that you reason about as a life cycle. And then the fact that it's got a blobs or layers collection is, yeah, here's where all the details are, and here's how I can do cool things like deduping, but that's a, it's like a, a, an intentional line of delineation between the two um, that lets you be efficient about storage while being efficient and optimal around what it is I'm trying to store, if that makes sense from the, the two categories. Did I go on too much of a tangent there? Does that make sense? I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree. Like um, a thing that is, if you put something to the manifest handler, that thing is a thing in and of itself, right? It is sufficient to have identity and you can pull it and you can delete it, right? It's, it's a unit of thing. Uh, so I agree with that. Um, I don't know that that like informs what this problem very much. Because like an index is still an index, regardless of whether or not it only refers to manifests or it also refers to blobs. Well, I think that's the thought process is that the, because of manifest collect, the thought is, is that an index, the way the index is defined today, because it says manifests in it, it's still a collection of manifests. Um, that's that's kind of like the, the thought process. And, and earlier, at some point in the artifact stuff, we were looking at putting like media type, for instance, or a config, media type on index so that we could also say, hey, this collection of things also means it is a, a CNAB, I think was the canonical example at the time, but it's still a definition of a thing. The fact that the definition of a thing is a collection of other artifacts is, you know, images, because uh, we kind of backed off from that proposal. It's still a, a collection of things that you have lifecycle management around. So, um, I mean, it's great to think about it, like, we, we should definitely clarify, I think, leaning towards clarifying that it is a way to represent life cycle of things you store in a registry. Um, and the one use case that we know is using or abusing, taking advantage of this uh, lack of clarity, they're more than willing to switch. You know, like the, that's the feedback that I've seen in Zhao's uh, proposal. Uh, they're saying like, what should we switch to? And if they switch to that, how much will they have um, more support across registries? And the time that he spent to actually clarify in that link of which registries are, you know, green or yellow or red was was pretty cool to actually see. Yeah, I know last time one of the key things was we defined the manifest of that link to say there was an OCI manifest. And we don't want to say it's just an OCI manifest. So that needs to go away and figure out how we want to define this, if that needs to be part of the image spec, but then the distribution spec probably needs to get into garbage collection at some point, unfortunately. I think- Or just separate the two. Like this is the refactoring conversation we keep on trying to have is the distribution sex says, hey, it knows how to persist manifests. Here's a couple that it knows about. And then that, that image spec knows how to say, this is exactly how an image spec works for a container image. If it gets used for something else, great. But the distribution side, distribution spec side, not distribution distribution, the distribution spec says, hey, I know how to receive things through the manifest API that defines things. To be OCI compliant, you have to support at least these two, but you can support others. Hmm. Yeah, and for the garbage collection, I, I'm just kind of hitting on that one just because I know that's where a lot of the distribution complication came in because they were starting to say, well, if we don't treat it as a manifest, then we might garbage collect it. And so since we don't define what that is, and everybody's implemented it separately. I think that's kind of giving us a little bit of chaos. And so it might be useful to say there is a guarantee where 
if you garbage collect this, this is how you would decide what to keep and what to throw away. I mean, just to pile on to the yeses, I mean, honestly, like I said, this, this is the only reason ACR even implemented it. Like we didn't intend to do it. It's just, we supported build kit and tasks and all of a sudden, I don't know exactly, because it was working on one support. I guess they switched their implementation to index and all of a sudden customers were saying, why are my tasks take, why are my runs taking slower than faster? And we found out that we were GCing them because we didn't know what to do with them. Um, so. Um, homebrew, wait, what does Homebrew do? Homebrew creates in, in this. Uh, so the thing is, I think John's kind of hit one interesting point here, which is if we agree on falling back, if it doesn't, if it's not a manifest, we can look at the cast store and find out that it's a blob. That's a good enough implementation for everybody to fall as a reference. And that's what we did. I'm guessing most of the implementations would go down that route um, if we don't want to mandate anything. But there are two scenarios that I think people are kind of like, as part of the whole ambiguity problem space here. When we move an index, what is the expectation here? Right, like you copy an index over, we actually walk the whole chain and bring the whole thing over. That's one way of kind of like moving content across clouds and whatnot. The second part is, um, what if we did have manifests we didn't understand, do we expect that move to actually function? Uh, or do we just ignore them when we consider an index? I, I think the whole aspect of keeping the index on the distribution side uh, it, uh, kind of like skirts the problem. And why I think the life cycle is important is we have customers who have requested keep this image around for three years or keep this tag around for three years. What do you keep for three years? Uh, when you say pin that index for a compliance perspective. So it's not easy to just kind of say that we can just keep this forever because they, after three years, they want it gone. They don't want the cloud to hold on to the data from a compliance standpoint. So we have to walk the entire chain and clean it up. So it, it is an interesting challenge here to kind of define what that closure set is uh, and what all do we delete when we actually delete the index. Uh, from a, Because we've had both sides of it. Like at first we thought like, as long as we don't delete it, it's fine. But then we had customers come back and say, you, we want to make sure when we delete it, it's actually gone because there's no legal, you can't go back and you know prove that we had, they had something. But I want to get, I mean, the GDPR is lots of different examples of it. So, and I think this is not meant to impose one thing from one provider to another. I think it's just a matter of customers use multiple registries. How do they have some level of consistency across them? I, mean, just, I just want to reinforce, sorry, John, the, the last, this is why I keep on trying to bubble it up as life cycle and not GC, because I totally agree. GC is an implementation detail that each registry should figure out how they do. It's the life cycle management that I, I keep on trying to bubble up. I think that's the consistency, because that's the end user experience I'm looking for. They're similar. Um, yeah, I agree. I mean, even the lifecycle management is going to be different, probably, depending on your registry, right? Um, like, do well, you does it? Like, do I, that'd be a great conversation to have. Like, what do we think is like? Obviously, we'll have registers have better policies. Like, hey, can you maintain the last five tags? But I think what Saji was kind of getting at is when you do delete a tag or a digest of an index or an image, what are the expectations? And this was the insightful thing for me when Justin was talking about how Docker Hub works is that they keep the tag history. So if you delete the tag, like in ACR, we don't have that capability. If you delete a tag, we're only gonna, we only actually delete the tag and then the digest just sits there. You have to actually say, I wanna delete untagged digest, which I think a couple of us implement. What they did was they keep track of all the digests were associated with that tag. And when they delete the tag, that chain is ref counted to be fair, because if that digest is also associated with another tag, then it gets ref counted down and it's only until it hits zero. I actually thought that was a pretty cool idea. Um, I'm not suggesting we necessarily, that would be a conversation to have for standards, but do we want to at least try to have some level of, if you delete a tag or a digest, what is the expectation? We're a repository. 
Yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> Don't get me started about deleting repositories that talk broke. <laughs> <laughs> There's no API for it, at least, so we don't have to solve that problem. Oh, um, well, no. <laughs> they do. Like, well, they have the UI, and um, so, like, a, a, a distribution a, spec API. Are we going to legislate how the Docker UI works in a spec? Well, software? they have APIs on things too. Whether it's part of our our the OCI specs is a different question. <laughs> but the, I, I can just tell you, as we've been trying to remove all the content from Hub and try to keep it on MCR so that the costs are reduced to Docker and customers have a consistent experience. We're not, it's not, it turns out that the deletions aren't happening the way they should. I, I don't wanna yeah. bring up dirty laundry. I just, the, the, the clarity here would be we, helpful. We, we agree. It, it's something we have to solve eventually. <laughs> I'd like to at least know what everyone does. I know what I do. I don't know what every other registry does. And maybe there's a, that would be nice. Intersection we can be happy about. But yeah, I mean, like, there's an explicit delete this blob API, right? Like, it's not necessary that registries do clean up for you. Um, it could be that clients are responsible for cleaning up after themselves. And that would maybe solve the lifecycle quandary of, uh, if I delete this thing, I want to make sure it's gone. Well, there's an API for that. Um, I know so. a lot of All right. Yeah. It, I, it, I know. It's so we, it's we have an interesting um, set of conversations to have in a work group that we, we should create as soon as we have a process for. <laughs> well, this one, I feel like that's we should have the working group topic. conversation and that is queued up. But I, I, I want to pick up on John's suggestion. I mean, some of the stuff, look, some of these things we have intellectual property that we don't necessarily want to share, right? Or just you can discover it's just not something we advertise. Is this something that we want to just write up? Like, does, I think we should all have, if we don't, we probably should have docs for our customers to understand what is the behavior of deleting X, Y, and Z. Do folks object to just writing down or pointing to their docs of what the expectations, you know, what we are currently doing to see if we can find a, a minimum viable standard across all of them? I would like that. I've, I've suggested this in the past. I'd like to, because there's a lot of things around deletion that are hard uh, and everyone does it slightly differently. And so it's hard to know what we can even say to change, or, you know? Um, yeah, I yep. think that would be great. Someone wants to file an issue, we can collect these behaviors and maybe do something about it. Cool. I'll, I'll open an issue and I guess, what would the forum be? Everybody just post to the issue the links to their behavior or something, or is this like a hack doc, you know, or discussion? There's a there's a mechanical thing here we have to figure out how to do best. It, the other part is saying what you do and actually doing what you say is. <laughs> this is what we think we're doing. Now we have to go I, back yeah, and double check. So I'm just saying, <laughs> there, there may be some test cases required to uh, discern behavior with respect to this. But I think to John's point, I think, just writing down what we think we do. Like no, Docker no, believes no. when you delete a repo, things are gone. You delete a tag, things are gone. There's bugs. Bugs are bugs. But what is our expected behavior across the registries? Um, just documenting that is a, seems like a good starting point. So, Yeah, yeah and if, if this idea actually works and people are able and willing to share, um, there's kind of other things that I think would be interesting to look at too. Um, not not just specific to registries, but like command line clients tool. Like I was just thinking about caching the other day. Um, like there, you can go online and read kind of the the high level things about Docker. But for different implementations, they ha almost have to be different. And I I would love to, I don't know, get them all written down in one place and be like, is there some common thing here that we can like write down? <laughs> hmm. I'll take the action item to at least surface the question of, hey, here's some ideas and where we can start writing this down and then we can start writing it down. Cool. And uh, Vanessa, my response of the day was like, I trying to, how much we can do in this group was kind of the, the question. Like if we can just store cache results in a registry in a consistent way, that'd be good. And I think the different projects are doing different things and they're innovating in their own space. I don't know if they're ready to be standardized as opposed to this is what each tool does and let them fight it out because I think we're seeing some better things happen because they're battling each other. Yeah, this is like very like long-term down the line, but um, the recent discussion on the Slack about 
caching and different, just, 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 just basically different clients to like get me this manifest. Um, I forget who said it, but someone had an idea like, we need one of those tab thingies where you have like the different languages. And so I can imagine someday that OCI says like, here's projects that implement this thing. Oh, and here's a tab for each one. And it shows you like how you do this interaction. Like that would be super cool. It, it is not totally directly related to OCI, but it is making this connection between like this, this very abstract standard and like real world client implementation things that at least I find super helpful. Sorry, before we go to the next, I was just looking at the agenda, but we captured, and I was just typing, the, we captured the next steps for um, figuring out to write down what our different behaviors are and pointing to. What do we want to do with the um, clarifying what manifests mean and what the manifest collection in both distribution and image? John, did you want to take that one? Like, what, what do you want? I, so, I don't see any problem is the reason I don't want to take this action item is I think everything's fine. Uh, I don't want to change anything and I think this works. So my, the issue is if you do see a problem um, and you want some language to change to make it so that there is a problem for the spec, some future version of the spec, then um, I'd, I would like to discuss that spec change on its own. Like I don't want to cast some value judgments right now about what we think should happen. All I'm saying is that the spec doesn't say that there's a problem here, um, and if you think it, you think it does, uh, then send a PR to make it so. Um, I don't know who wants to own that. But I think what we are saying is the ambiguity is creating confusion, such as what the Buildex, you know, team, Buildkit team, wound up doing. Sure. Yeah, it, it's ambiguous, uh, but I don't think it's forbidden on purpose by any spec, right? If, if you want to forbid what is happening, then you need to spec it somehow. And I'm happy to argue on that PR. I don't really, I don't wanna take up more time like putting my opinion down everyone's throat. I, I actually thought we were at a consensus point though. That's why I was sorry. I thought uh, you were okay if we did say that a manifest should collect manifests that represent life cycle things. And maybe we do need to define what a manifest is as I think to a that block. is a reasonable way to interpret that but I don't think it's necessarily correct to interpret it that way. And so if you want that to be truth, then I would request that you make spec language changes that make it so. Um, I, I mean, I like the flexibility, right? Like I use an image index to store all kinds of random stuff on my disk. It's a nice, like I, I'll sell you on the gospel of like the generic Merkle dag in the sky that I've been building. But I, you know, I'm one guy. I don't really know that everyone needs to buy into this. So, and, and the spec says it's okay. Right. Yeah. And, and I'm ignore it in if he does it. So it's sort of on purpose, right? Well, I mean, I don't look to be fair. Like the, we all implement additional APIs in our registries for all the gaps that exist. So I don't think anybody saying any one registry couldn't do whatever they want to do in some creative way. I think the question is for for a group like build. Like so, if something's building specific for for GCR, um, awesome. Go off and do it. And the expectation that works on GCR for teams like the build kit team they're confused as hell because it works in one, in fact, the only, ironically, it works in Docker Hub, which is not too much of a surprise because they made it work, um, but doesn't work on the other ones. Uh, whereas the artifact stuff does work across all of them, except from Hub, and we're still hopeful that they'll get that finished soon. Um, so, so my so point is, what do we want as consistent, what do we want to, if a spec is to help with standards to enable consistent experiences, should so we this, clarify what should and then where, where the spec it. tried to be very clear and, and, and define behavior is when you use OCI, right? When you actually put the OCI in the tag as the type, then we defined in that spec what that means, right? But, but then it said, you know, you don't have to use this one if you don't want to. <laughs> so the, the point I'm making is like, I'm not using this really, there's no registry feature that enables this. It's just that th per the spec, you are allowed to implement a registry that allows this kind of thing. And so I'm using this the client side. I'm not doing anything with the registry, really. I'm using an image layout as a client side, like nice, well-typed DAG storage mechanism. And some registries allow you to push arbitrary things in an index, which means I can use a registry to move around my store of arbitrary content with 
a strongly typed safe type system. It's really beautiful. But uh, if we make the changes such that registries have to reject this thing I've been doing for years, I'm going to be a little upset. Um, not that upset, but a little. And so that that's where I want to see what change do you want to make? Can I still operate in the margins? If not, I'm going to argue against it. But obviously, I have one vote of many. Or it would have to be a point release at least, work. right? Sorry, you, have, you have three votes. Uh, where? What? Uh, <laughs> uh, but, in, in the uh, chat, we're all drinking John stuff. Oh, I see. But, but um, I'm wondering whether um, it, the spec needs to be explicit about being ambiguous. So. Specific uh, about being ambiguous. Okay. <laughs> specific. I mean, we we think it is, but maybe it wasn't written as clear as we think it was. <laughs> yeah. So maybe but, like this this intentional some verbiage around, you know, uh, it's intentionally left ambiguous. But if you care about backwards compatibility, you should implement it this way. I think that's where you're looking for the should to... language in the spec, up, all uppercase. So the question okay. I have for John is, could, is there a reason, like the same question went to the build kit folks, is there a reason you're using index versus if you use manifest with the collection of blobs and they're not ordinal, would that meet, would that solve the same thing? Because, and I'm not trying to micromanage what you do for your GCR thing, what I've been trying to figure out is, how do we define a general way? So whatever you're doing, you can continue to do and BuildKit can do and WASM can do. Like how do we standardize these things so that we don't need to know about all the different artifact types? It's like saying that there's a clearinghouse for file extensions. Like the whole idea is a file system doesn't care, right? Yeah, I mean, you only really need to care about all the artifact types if you've designed your registry in such a way that you have to. Um, there are a lot of registry implementations that do not care that a manifest and a blob are uploaded through different paths, right? Um, and so like, I I don't know, I think the premise is faulty, but it, you know, yeah, I can bend over a little bit more backwards by introducing an extra level of indirection by having like an additional hop between the top level index and blobs. I can add an image in there, but it's just a no op. I'd rather have a heterogeneous collection of pointers into the DAG with the type system. It's, it's, I can like list it as if it were a directory. What are all? What is all the content in this directory? Um, I give a top. How is that different than an image manifest? Is all I'm asking. I'm, I'm trying to figure out the, the delta. because it, in an index an, an OCI image layout is an image index at the top level. And so if I want to store things in a top level thing, it is the image index that is that top level thing. And yeah, the index is the most generic. You can't do nested manifest. You can't. Right put other arbitrary things in there. The manifest says it must be the specific layout with a config object and other things in there that are not optional. I'm trying so hard not to tease into the artifact one where those things are optional and you have the reference yeah. types. I mean, I think that, I, what I'm that trying That is to, the answer. Uh, it's the long-term answer though. Yeah. And I, I'm trying, we're with five minutes left, we're not gonna get another topic. And so I'm, I'm just using this to finish, to figure out if there's an action item on this one. Like, I, I think it was just, this is kind of the core of what, again, yeah, we're just trying to, just, how do we capture a set of requirements for, for John, whatever it is that you're doing, like what's missing? Because today CNAB is, like, you know, th this is what's interesting about CNAB is it was a collection of artifacts and we couldn't figure out how to properly do it without revving the image index. And um, so I think, I believe what we've been doing lately with the artifact stuff does allow these kind of things. So that's the part that I'm just trying to figure out like, without trying to get the detail of exactly what you're doing. What is what is this use case and scenario so that we can we can generalize it? So we don't have to be on a call every time troubleshooting somebody's interpretation as opposed to saying, here's very clearly how you implement persistence in a registry with lifecycle management and party on. In fact, if I could get time to finish this other PR, there's a way that you can actually have, uh, upload icons um, and localize strings to so we can display in our registries of what these things are. Um, but just if we can standardize it, we can get all these different benefits. Yeah, there was an attempt looking through a lot of the other instances like the Helm charts and some of those things. And they point out here, here are a whole bunch of different examples. They're all using the OCI manifest, you know, why can't, Bill Kit do that too. 
every single one of them had a fake object and every single one of them had a single layer. And that's a very specific model that fits a lot of people, but doesn't fit everything. That's actually a point where I, where I would like to suggest a change to the spec because that currently is a must. Uh, the layers must be in order with the base layer on the first place and then the others, uh, but order only matters if the application that you're trying to address uh, as that concern or not. For BuildKit, for example, order doesn't matter. Um, for Homebrew, for Wasm, uh, any other non-container image use cases, layer order doesn't matter uh, because they are not actually layers, just pieces of data. Uh, so it's a bit unclear if this fits within the, within the image spec or it will be something for the future artifact spec. What I'm doing works today. Uh, in places I care about. And so like, if I'm, I now need to wait for everyone to implement the artifacts thing, then that is fine. I just won't use it for three years. That's so. a bit of a, I, I think we, it will all implement things as fast as our customers need them. And I do say customers in case to differentiate users versus customers. So I think that's the cycle that we keep on getting ourselves carved into is it doesn't exist yet, so we won't use it. But if we don't start creating what exists, we'll never get to there. It's just the, the infinite cycle. You have to start somewhere. So I know this is going to hog up a lot of the time with the last few seconds here left. Um, I hate to keep continuing this every week. And so I don't want to push this into the next week, but probably needs to get pushed into some GitHub issues and stuff like that. Are there specific action items, next steps people want to see come out of this? Someone who wants this to change, uh, if they want to convince me that the spec says this is disallowed, make a PR to the spec to change it. That's my suggestion. That's true. And I think you know there's there is some folks that are, have been you know Jao has been helping help the um, uh, build X, build kit build X team kind of figure out what could work and how to get them unblocked on things and that his list of, of what works and what doesn't work was, was pretty pretty insightful. So looking for next steps there. Um, I think the only other thing that was on there, we're not gonna get to it, but it's the, the next steps on the working group proposals. So I did see Steve had put a bunch of, uh, is he even here? Or he dropped already? Oh, sorry, that was me. It's supposed to be the other Steve Win Windsor, because um, he had put a bunch of uh, updates to the working group. So we'll let that fall over till next week. But... Steve Winslow is um, the uh, uh, legal folks over on our end who has been taking care of this. That's why I wanted to be able to get it on the docket for today. So as we're out of time, it'll have to sit to next week. It'll give folks a chance to read all his feedback, because he, he did post a bunch of stuff today. Exactly. And I was trying to be able to make sure that it got in before this meeting. So maybe folks would have a chance to be able to review, but we're out of time. So there we are. Thanks, Amy. Yep. Happy to help. Uh, is Jason still here? Or he had a drop? That's why I wanted the time thing. Was he yeah, well, I was saying the next steps for him, if he wants to aggregate the recommendations so we can ping them offline and just, you know, say he wants to drive getting closure to that one. Well, was Vanessa the one asking about the RFC docs? That was me, yeah. But yeah. it's okay, that can wait or pick up in, if anyone wants to respond to the, the thread in the Google group. All right. Vanessa, are we going to see a different color next week? Are those no, these are, these are $10 Thanks. lights I got last year. I only have purple. They sometimes look blue if I move, like. Ish. Ooh, yeah, there you go. There you go. But yeah, sorry. Total I actually have a, I have more lights though. Oh, wow. I got these on the weekend. You can program these. I program these to, um, well, right now it's just showing colors, but I programmed it to show like the hourly weather. It's pretty cool. You can do anything. And we'll look for new updates to your color for next week. 
<laughs> Thanks, folks. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, guys.